Michael Carey, the pastor of Church in the Wild. So we're starting out here in the corner of my front yard, the side yard, and I want you to see the garden. And made a deliberate choice when we, we built this house to put the garden on the outside of the backyard fence. And one of the reasons for that was because I knew from years past that I have a tendency to sort of see my home as a private domain and kind of pull in and stay in the backyard, maintain privacy. And I really wanted to be a more missional Christian. And I knew one of the ways to engage my neighbors was to put the garden on the outside of the fence. And then by doing that, I'd have to wave at all the people driving by and um, and also talk to people walking their dogs. And it's, it's worked really well. It's been a great experience and I've gotten to know a lot of people this way. One of the surprises has been that the children have been so interested in the garden. And in fact, the only reason we can record this right now is because the children are in school. If the children were out of school, they'd be surrounding us saying, why are you recording on a, on a phone in, in, in your front yard? <laughs> so whenever I'm out here working, and it's, it's almost always the case that children rush up and want to talk and want to ask what I'm doing, and they want to help harvest something. And whenever we can, we do. And uh, you might see, here some of the some of the pole beans. I don't know if you can see them yet, but they're maybe in a week or two we'll be harvesting those in a couple of weeks. These these carrots and then the beets. The real dilemma is when the children want to help me plant. Because to involve children in the planting takes a, a lot longer. In order to do it right, uh, because every size seed needs to be a certain depth and a certain distance from the other seeds. It's really necessary to sit by a child and to help them put the seed in the ground one at a time. And uh, sometimes the sun's going down and I don't feel like I have enough time, but I try to tell myself this is what really matters, these relationships. And so I involve the children and it may be a little slower, but we get it done. And as you can tell, uh, the pole beans, which one of the boys in the neighborhood helped me plant, turned out fantastic and a girl a little girl who helped me plant the carrots she did a great job too so I've thought a lot about these issues as I read this week about Jesus and how he treated children in contrast to the way other men in his culture treated children we um, we know that it's often the attitude that children are to be seen and not heard. Well, back in Jesus' day, this was the case um, even more. Uh, particularly somebody like Jesus, a rabbi who had the attention of all the adults, somebody who obviously was, was very important. Uh, you know, the, atti the attitude that the children should not interrupt. Well, this is what makes this account really interesting in Mark's gospel. In Mark chapter 10, verse 13, it says people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. So we need to ask what qualities of that the children manifested are these key qualities to which we need as adults to enter the kingdom of God? Well, the first thing we think of is that children are dependent on others. Uh, children recognize that, uh, that they need adults to feed them. They need adults to care for them. They need adults to protect them. And so children recognize their dependency. And if children have been in healthy relationships, children are trust, children trust adults, trust their parents. And this, this trust that children, ha that children have is essential for us to have as we relate to God our Father. 
Jesus was, was basically saying that, that um, whereas religion is the tendency to think that I earn God's love and I demonstrate my worthiness of his attention, that it's our recognition of how we can't earn it, we're not worthy, and we are in fact dependent on God's grace to be part of the kingdom of God, that that's the key essential quality of what it means to be part of God's family. And, and we think about um, the sheer delight that a father has when his, his uh, son or daughter wants to jump from the edge of the pool into his arms, you know, and catch me, daddy. And the child trusts that the father is not gonna let him or her drown. That's the kind of sheer delight that God feels toward us when we relate in a childlike way. And that relationship with God then influences the way we treat children and other people who our society might consider to be marginal. In the chapter just before that, chapter 9, verse 33, it tells us that Jesus and his disciples came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what are you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, if anyone wants to be the first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. So because God is so gracious to condescend to mortals, to love us and lift us up and in fact give us eternal life and to have delight in that. We as God's people and followers of God's son Jesus, we have the same attitude. That grace that we receive makes us more gracious, especially toward people at the margins, including children. So followers of Jesus Christ have a priority and that is to nurture children, to nurture their well-being and particularly to help them know God's care for them and God's love and, and the story of God's salvation in Jesus Christ. Now this is not just something that, that we have as an attitude towards our own children or grandchildren. It, it overflows to our attitude towards other people's children. And I think no matter what our age or no matter what our circumstances, it's important for us to ask God to tell us, to, to reveal to us, how can I be more tangibly involved in children's lives, either the ministry of my church or a more missional, organic relationship with the children of the families that live near to me. There are huge benefits of of having a posture of being located with children. And I have an example from my early years as a pastor back in Atlanta. I was in a, an older suburb of Metropolitan Atlanta, small church. One of the women who had, a woman who had been an intern pastor for me, a seminary student, was ordained, she had finished seminary, and I had the opportunity to participate in the ordination ceremony at a high steeple church, a big church in downtown Atlanta. And as part of that ordination ceremony, everyone in there was invited to a reception afterwards. It was actually a sit-down meal. And, and I, had been, I had been assigned to a table with the families who came from out of town who were related to the woman being ordained. Now what you need to know is that I had heard that a certain man was gonna be a participant in this ordination ceremony. Happened to be the, the founder and owner of the biggest residential construction company in Metro Atlanta. In fact, his company was now building houses across the country. And, and I was just really curious to get to know this guy. Really wanted to meet this guy. And actually, my church was in a building program, and I, I kind of was thinking that 
you know, it would be it would be wonderful if he wanted to invest in the ministry of our church redevelopment out in the older suburbs of Atlanta. So I really wanted to meet this guy. When I found out I was seated at the table of the out-of-town families, not at his table, and that sitting around me would primarily be children, I was devastated. I was really frustrated. And, uh, and we were about to start the meal. And that same guy, that developer, noticing there was one empty chair at this table of children who were from out of town, he decided he wanted to sit there. <laughs> and because he had a more childlike attitude and because he valued children, he ended up sitting at my table. <laughs> and I did get to ask him many of my questions. There are more profound benefits to being associated with children. And the more profound benefits are being able to renew and maintain that childlikeness we need to enjoy our relationship and relationship that God gives us by grace and to, and to have the qualities of childlikeness. That sense of wonder at the goodness of life, that sense that we bask in parental love, that ability to play, and that proneness to laugh that is typical of children. These kingdom of God qualities, which are so often missing in the lives of those of us who take adulthood very seriously and take the challenges of life very seriously. So let me ask you as we close this morning, how might you cultivate childlikeness? Ask yourself, how might I take initiative to, to attend to children to minister to children so that I might be renewed and strengthened in childlikeness.